Inference. We're going to sit and talk about inference, guys. Hi, everybody. I'm sure last year many of you had your teachers show you uh, this bodiless head, this floating head. Kind of morbid, isn't it? Ooh, just in time for Halloween. And they did an inference lesson with that. And they probably, hopefully, talked about the five inference, the uh, five steps to making an inference. And if they did, then you know what? We're not, you know, I'm just going to turn this off. We don't need to do that. It's like, because we are going to keep pushing that skill over and over and over. This is the skill that we are going to use the rest of this year. We're going to apply it to everything from fiction to nonfiction to videos to comic books to whatever, whatever our poetry, to whatever we, our hearts desire, to whatever Mr. Royan's, well, I guess to whatever Mr. Royan's heart desires, right? And the thing I want you to remember is what an inference is. Okay? An inference is text clues plus background knowledge. Text clues plus black plus background knowledge equal inference. But what does that mean? Text clues plus background knowledge. Well, text clues are what you read in the text that tell you what the text, like, they, they clue you in to what's happening. And you combine those with your knowledge, the stuff in your knowledge backpack, the stuff you have back there, to make an inference. An inference is thinking about what you are reading. It's a thinking voice that's always going, but you're using it to help figure out what you're reading. What is it about? What is the author not saying that, that's just understood? It's figuring out something the author never said. Okay, now I want you to listen to me read this article, and then we're going to talk about this question. The question is, what is the season? So step one of our inference chart says, read, view the text. Then step two says, read the question. So I want you to... The, Next part coming up in this video is me reading the text. I want you to listen to that, about 20 seconds long. Then we're going to go back and we're going to look at the question. Imagine a half a dozen students standing at the end of the street. It's a dark morning at 7 a.m. The students are huddled together. Several are hugging themselves. Others are jumping up and down. And still others are rubbing their hands together and huffing on them. When the bus arrives, one student hollers, BUS! All the students run to get on the vehicle. Okay, so you listen to me read that. And that's the first step. Read slash view the text. And I'll, I'll send you a picture of this anchor chart, guys, so that you have it. And then part two, read the question. And the question is, what is the season? What season is happening right then and there in that text. Now, I'm sure you can quickly read that and go, oh, I know, I know the answer to that, Mr. Royens. But the point of this exercise is to show you how these steps are used. Because we're going to use it from everything, from a text as simple as that, to much more complex texts as this year goes on, OK? So step number three, our question is, what is the season? Step three says, list relevant details. Now, you're going to list the relevant details. And when I use the head, I put the relevant details along the outside. So I have sticky notes already made up because that's how I roll. And the first 
relevant detail I found that I'm going to list comes kind of first in the passage, and it says it was dark at 7 a.m. Okay, dark at 7 a.m. 7 a.m. dark. Okay, um, what else? What's another relevant detail? Oh, people were huffing on their hands. Huffing on their hands. That's a pretty relevant detail because people don't do that all the time. So it's kind of an interesting out of the place, like, mm hmm. Then I've got a couple more minor details. Or, or, you know what? I don't know if I would even call them minor. Sorry, I dropped them on the ground. But more details that make me kind of go, hmm. That's not always normal behavior, so it's kind of important to me. They're hugging themselves, and they're jumping up and down. Okay. Okay, they're hugging themselves, and they're jumping up and down. And then the last detail is they ran to the bus. I'm going to keep this one down so you guys can see it better. They ran to the bus. Why would they run to the bus? They love school that much that they just want to run to the bus? Hmm. Okay. So that's, that's my thinking voice as I read that text. I stop and I pause, and I list those details. And now that we've listed the relevant details, we need to look at number four, which is look for patterns or relationships. Well, what does that mean? What's a pattern? A pattern is something that's repeated. A relationship is how things are related. So how are these things related? Or what is a pattern that I notice amongst these things that helps me solve the or figure out the answer to my question of what season is this? Well, I can look at 7 a.m. And what about 7 a.m.? Well, 7 a.m. dark. Dark is 7 a.m. When is it dark at 7 a.m.? I mean, back in the summertime, I woke up, and it was bright out at like 6, right? So if it's dark at 7 a.m., I'm going to go ahead and say it's not summertime for sure. Probably not even spring, right? So it's not summer. Um, then I'm going to stop and I'm going to think about huffing on hands. What does that mean, huffing on hands? Why do people usually huff on hands? What is huffing on hands? You know, Right? What do, when do people do that? Why do people do that? Well, they do it to get warm, right? Or to keep warm, actually. To keep warm. So they're huffing on their hands to keep warm. Well, when do I usually see people doing that? Huffing on their hands to keep warm. That's definitely, once again, that's not a summertime thing, right? That is not a summertime activity. I don't see people out there in the middle of the afternoon going, <sighs> now maybe you're inside and you're in a freezer, getting in the freezer and your hands are cold from, I don't know, ice cubes or something, maybe. <sighs> but... Never people standing out on a street corner waiting for the school bus to come. Okay. Um, then our other details, jumping up and down, hugging themselves. So people are out there going, and it's not like, ah, I love myself, I'm going to give myself a hug. No, 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 no. It's a, and jumping up and down. 
Now, the only place I ever see people jump up and down like that is concerts. When somebody's like, ah, and they're jumping up and down. And, but you don't see people doing that outside unless they're trying to do something. And the same for hugging themselves. You're not trying to, you're not hugging yourself just for the fun of it out when you're out waiting for the bus. Usually people are doing something like that to get warm, right? Because you're moving. You're moving around. I'm sorry, you're moving around. And what does that do when you're moving around? When you move around, when it's chilly out, that helps you get warm, right? So it's definitely not summer again because you don't really see, I mean, maybe somebody's outside working out that might be jumping around, but people aren't out there like hugging themselves trying to get warm in the summertime waiting for the bus. Hmm. And then the last relevant detail. And that last relevant detail was they ran to the bus. They were like, what? The bus! And then there was like a charge, a herd, a, stamp, a herd of cattle stampeding. Why was everybody running to the bus? Why would they run to the bus? I, I know students, and I know very few of you, not all, but very few of you get that excited for school. So, what does that mean? Well, they're probably running. I mean, why would, why would you want to go in the house if you were outside in this weather? You'd want to get warm, right? If you were a student waiting on a bus, why would you want to get on the bus? Buses are heated, right? So you want to get out of that cold. Probably to go get warm, right? Yeah, to get warm. So you're going to run to the bus to get warm. Okay. So we've listed relevant details. Number three. Well, actually, let's start from the top. We've read slash viewed the text. We read the question, which is, what's the season? And we've listed relevant details. And the relevant details are... It's dark at 7 a.m. They were huffing on their hands. They were jumping up and down, hugging themselves, and then they ran to the bus. And then number four, we look for patterns or relationships. Well, and I put those in pink on the inside of the head, and that's what I know. Like, I know that 7 a.m., it's dark, it's not summertime. That's me. I'm using text clues mixed with my background knowledge. I know at 7 a.m. it's not dark in the summertime, so that's ruling out summer. I know that when it's cold out, people huff on their hands to keep warm. I've seen that so many times, and I activate my background knowledge, go, okay, so it's got to be cold. All right, so it's not summertime. It's got to be cold because people only huff on their hands when they're cold. They're moving around. They're jumping up and down, and they're hugging themselves. Why are they doing that? So that they can get warm, right? So they're moving around. Because moving around at physical activity makes you get warm, right? Think of gym class. When you run, you sweat all over the place. You go outside on a hot day, you don't need to do that stuff to get warm. Once again, I'm using the text clues combined with my background knowledge of going, okay, they're jumping up and down, they're moving around. That means they're cold. And then, finally, they ran to the bus. And like I said, I know darn well, none of you, well, very few of you are like, yes, let's go to school, and going to run to the bus. It's cold. These kids are trying to get out of the cold onto the warm bus to get warm. So what does that mean? What time of the year is it? Well, our fifth step says determine what they mean. What does all that mean together? What time of the year is it? It's not summertime. It's not springtime. 
Now, it could be the fall, to maybe to an extent you might see some of these things. Because, yeah, it's fall time now, and it's dark at 7 a.m. when I get, at school, get to school. But I'm not going to see people huffing their hands out on the street corner waiting for a bus. I'm not going to see people jumping up and down, hugging themselves. And I'm certainly not going to see people going, get on the bus, quick! Okay. So that just leaves one option. Process of elimination. Winter! You know, that time of the year that's coming up right now. Well, in a few more months, we're going to get that, that white stuff to, that flows down from the sky. Snow! Okay. So, that is what we've done. We, that, that short little text, all those thoughts went through my brain using these outside, the bluish turquoise ones, those are outside of my head information. That is information that is in the text, right? Those are the details that are in the text. These pink sticky notes are the inside my head. They're from inside my head. My background knowledge, my knowledge backpack. Those are the things that I already know that I've linked to those details, okay? And I'm combining, I'm using those text clues plus my background knowledge to go, all right, it's gotta be wintertime. Plain and simple, right? Guys, inferring and inference is just thinking. It is just thinking about what you read. And that is all I want you to understand. And inference is thinking about what you read. And that's what we're going to do. We're just going to be thinking about what we are reading. Okay? This concludes today's whole group lesson. Inference. It's just a synonym for thinking, guys.